Hello and welcome to Law and More. My name is Rena Badira, a children's solicitor at IBB Law. In this podcast, I will be discussing the issue of internal relocation. Essentially, you and your kids moving away from your ex-partner. I'm pleased to be joined by Jamie Barton, who was a service manager at the Children and Family Court Advisory and Support Service, known as CAFCAS. She has been a children's guardian representing the children's voice, is a qualified social worker, and is now an independent social worker. Jamie has a wealth of experience spanning over 17 years, and I've asked Jamie to provide us with her insight when she is instructed as an expert independent social worker. What are the key elements that she looks at when one parent wishes and seeks to relocate with the children, and what she considers when making and setting out her recommendations to the court, and what the court is likely to adopt? Relocation is an aspect of children law that when, as a solicitor, we are asked by clients, can my ex-partner relocate in the UK without my permission or agreement? And in fact, what are the implications when one parent is faced with the other parent seeking to relocate in the UK? Relationships have been placed under strain over the last three years with the pandemic and now the rise of cost of living. And for many, moving closer to friends and family has become ever more important. Many divorced and separated couples do contemplate an internal relocation with the children. And what are the implications for the parent that is left behind? How do they navigate and maintain their relationships with their children? Thank you for having me, Rena. I'm going to use the example you've given of working with a family where there is no previous safeguarding history, social services involvement or police involvement. That often makes reporting to court much more straightforward and the issue of moving away a single issue to report to court on. The main thing I would be looking at is being the voice of the child, if the child's old enough to tell us how they feel about this issue, but also the impact on the child. And you've already hinted at it's about the parent that they're moving away from the life that they might be moving away from. We need to look at how we can preserve their relationships and the impact on the child of anything else in their life that's likely to change, their friendship groups, education. So whilst it's a single issue in itself, moving away, it is very complicated and it is a big thing in a child's life to move away from their family or to move to a new place. And all of this is often happening in the midst of two parents who have separated, and there's often a few more complicated parts of the adult relationships that we need to look at as well. If you are a parent considering internal relocation, you need to consider all avenues and discuss your move with your ex-partner and the children. If you do not, and you make unilateral decisions that may impact the children negatively and impact the pattern the children spend time with the other parent, an ex-partner, or other parent can challenge and make an application for a prohibited steps order. This type of order is to prevent the other parent from relocating. And this can include an application for a charge arrangements order. This type of order seeks to define or ask the court to consider changing who the children live with, and at this stage, further consideration may be taken into account as to whether you may wish to making an application to instruct an expert social worker. Their job and role will be to provide a report to the court and consider what is in the child's best interest and welfare. Many separated parents will have a set pattern and routine as to how the children spend time with the other parent. Any proposed relocation is fundamental change to the children's lives and requires careful consideration in terms of the likely impact the relocation will have between your child and your ex-partner. If relocation is not considered in the child's best interest, then the court or parents can ask an independent social worker to prepare a report. Yes, Rena, that's right. So picking up on what you've just said there, 
I'm often jointly instructed by parents, so they both agree that I should do the reports. And the questions are usually agreed in advance, either by the judge or by the parents, and I'll respond to those within a report. I need to generally consider factors, such as how the child's going to maintain a meaningful relationship with the parent left behind. For example, how and where are they going to spend time together? Usually I like to know what the current arrangement's been, so how much time they're used to spending with a parent. You've already mentioned a lot of parents have already come to an agreement about the amount of time a child will spend between households, and that's normal life for a child. I've already explained that this is a huge change for them, and I need to think about what their new normal is going to look like. For example, how far away is this proposed move, and what's the geographical distance involved? Another factor is the dynamic between the parents, travel, work, practical arrangements. If it's a significant distance, it can often mean children travelling long distances in cars and not being able to travel, for example, after school. I'll look at the parents' motivation for wanting to move. It's often to move closer to a support network, to family. There can be practical reasons, financial reasons. You've already implied the cost of living. House prices pay a big factor in that post-separation when parents can't afford to stay in one geographical area. If parents have been what I would call successfully co-parenting a child, one parent's time with the child is going to be significantly reduced and therefore the child's relationship with them is going to change. I have to look at what normal life looked like for them and will look like for them. Who is in their family? Who could they rely on in an emergency? Have they considered the change of school, change of friendship groups? Have they already looked at making practical arrangements for school or a new home? So there's lots of factors that will need to go into this report. And usually the questions asked of me are agreed because they are specific to the child and that individual family. Jamie, could I ask you... Do you take into account the children's ages? Absolutely. So you've already indicated um, in what you said before, is the child aware of the proposal to relocate? Often younger children aren't. um, And if they are, it determines how I'm going to approach the conversation with them about their wishes and feelings on this particular issue. How the move has been explained to them often tells me a lot about what they understand about why they have to move any worries they might have about it, and how they understand the relationship between their parents. For example, if they tell me that mummy or daddy have to move because they can't afford to stay here, I will usually start to wonder why the child is aware of quite adult topics of conversation, such as finances. Have they been exposed to those conversations? The wishes and feelings of children are very important. Older children's wishes and feelings will hold more weight. At what age would that be? That's a really good question and something a lot of parents will ask me um, based on the age of their child. How much attention are you going to pay to what my child wants? At any age, I want to understand what they think and how they feel. Their reasons for wanting to move or not wanting to move might be quite trivial in our eyes. It might be, I don't want to move away from my friends. It might be, I like my house. I like my bedroom because it's painted blue. But it could also be, I don't want to have to travel three and a half hours in the car every Friday night to see my parent. So I think I look at what they're telling me and sometimes what they're not telling me. I have been to see children who stay quite neutral on the issue of moving away because they know if they make a decision or share a view either way, one of their parents are usually going to be quite upset. Children explain and tell you their wishes and feelings, but is there an opportunity for children to explain how they feel to the judge? Yes, absolutely. If the child is confident enough to do that, I'll always support them to have their voice heard. They might want to write a letter, they might want to draw a picture, and any method that they're happy to show the judge how they feel about this, I'm happy to send on their behalf or include in the report. It's often something that's quite powerful, And it's an opportunity for an independent person to sit down and talk to them about how they feel. There may often be things that they want to say to their parents that they haven't felt able to say up until now. What 
what else would you include in your report, Jamie? I'll usually divide the report into different headings or topics. I've already spoken about the wishes and feelings and they're often central to the report. Mostly I will look at the child impact, so the impact on the child of the move, the reasons for the move, any alternatives to moving away. I'll then include my professional judgement as a social worker about the impact of this decision on the child, the benefits or detriments to the child, any possible solutions that I can think of to preserve the relationship with both of the parents. And then I'll make a recommendation to the court. And I'd emphasise there, it is a recommendation. The judge will make the final decision about what they think is in the best interest of the child. The court's paramount consideration and any decision regarding the child's upbringing is not taken lightly. The court would need to carefully consider specific facts of the case and whether any proposed move is in the best interest of a child. Yes, Rena, but at risk of doing you out of a job here, I think it's always best if parents can come to some sort of agreement before they have to go to court. It's never a nice experience for children to know that their parents don't agree on a particular issue. It puts the child in the middle of their conflict, intentionally or unintentionally. And having to meet a social worker isn't a normal experience for a child, and that's not something, ideally, we want to become involved in. If the adults in a child's life can make a decision and agree, that's always the best option for a child. With that in mind, children require more than ever unconditional love, security and stability from both their parents. Thank you so much for your time, Jamie. Thank you for having me, Rena. And thanks to you for listening to Laura Moore. And if you want any more information about what we do, please go to our website, ibblaw.co.uk.